Um, so Situate Art in Festivals was brought about through an application of funding uh, through the Australia Council of the Arts and uh, myself and Salamanca Arts put forward a proposal and the proposal uh, was really to present a model that would include an arts lab, a mentoring program and then a commissioning phase. And we went about calling in and partnering with festivals across the country that we thought we'd like to work with and we thought might be interesting for artists to make work for. So uh, we were successful in winning that bid and that was announced uh, beginning of this year. So we've moved very fast in getting this all up and running. Uh, but the lab is really something that came about from Paul and I's experience in running Splendid through or working with Splendor in the Grass. And it was similar in terms of an art lab mentoring phase and commissioning of works up to five each year for Splendor. And that program ran for three years and finished in 2012. So this is a new venture for us and it's something that we're really excited about. One, because we get to run the lab down in Tasmania, which we've grown very fond of. And two, because we get to work with lots of different festivals and each of those have very different sites and audiences and economy. So um, I'm going to hand over to Paul, uh, maybe first just to also mention the partners that we're involved with. Uh, the festival partners that we're including this year include Dark Mofo, uh, Mona Foma. Dark Mofo is Mona's new dark festival or festival that's going to be happening in winter in June down in Hobart, Mona Foma, which is their summer festival, and Darwin, Woe Madelaide, Fringe World and Harvest. Also we have an international festival joining us called Rise Festival, which is in South Africa. So that's our first international festival that joins us this year. Um, it's, the lab is 15 days. We're offering it up to 15 artists and there'll be 10 provocateurs which will be working with you across that 15 day period. So I'm going to hand to Paul, who's going to tell you what the role of provocateur is. He's the coordinating provocateur and he's also working with me and Salamanca Arts to really make sure that the lab is an intense period, but also a period that you really benefit from, both in making work at the end, but also in the networks and the relationships that you build over that 15 day period. Over yeah. to you, Paul. <laughs> it's very formal, it's funny. Oh. So, um, yeah, as Carly said, there's a very short time for the proposal, so we're trying to get this out as quickly as possible. And the invitation is really for artists to come forward and put, just give us their information, who they are, and there's one question that basically speaks about your relationship to potentially making work in this um, area, which is working in a festival context. And that shouldn't limit anybody's application because in the history of the past with all the labs that happened before, there were people that were coming along that didn't have any experience with, and in the case of the labs before, within, um, within Splendour and the Grass, which was a rock festival, and a few people had never even been to a rock festival. So it's not the question about knowing where you are. The lab is about actually understanding where you're going to be in the future with the work that we're creating. So there's, uh, as Carly said, there'll be 10 provocateurs spaced over the two weeks period of time where there's a, um, the, the momentum of people arriving, we start to talk about the ideas of creating work, people are starting to propose, uh, propose ideas, there's various workshops led by the individual uh, provocateurs. We haven't made our decisions, so you know we're not naming these people at the moment, but they're crossing over from installations, um, big built public artworks, uh, a painter I think could be in there, sound artists, so there's a variety of people and then also people are involved in a uh, res responsive idea of how to tour works. So what is the lab is a comprehensive time about understanding how you would propose a work from a potentially really quite wild concept and our discussion is how you can actually make it viable and realisable and that's talking about a whole gamut of things. The, Various festivals that Carly's named, they've all given different uh, sets of economies that they're given and it's starting from around three and a half thousand to up to fifty thousand. But but and and that means that not everybody's gonna get that shot. And the, the the interesting point is that your idea that you might propose 
for $3,000 actually might be a $50,000 idea. So we're not trying to say, we're not trying to bracket anything except try to be on a mode of over two weeks producing really interesting ideas that are fleshed out to a degree that at the end of that two weeks these ideas go back to the festival uh, themselves and then the dialogues start to begin about how you would realise the project in that context. So we work quite intensely. It's, you know, start in the morning and maybe at midnight, that's what's <laughs> happened generally. And that's the momentum of the artists that come along as well. You know, after a day of working, I mean, I think everybody's an artist here, you know sometimes the best ideas happen after you've stopped working. So there's a kind of uh, a momentum that, gets, that starts to happen over a couple of weeks. We're planning it this year that we'll spend a week in Hobart, which will time it with the end of the Dart Festival. Um, there'll be a, a potential presentation, and that's what we've been doing over the years, where the artists just present who themselves in a kind of a Pekka Kucha situation, so at least people can kind of go, oh, I'm interested in that. Then over that first week, the ideas that we're going to ask people to bring to the table will get discussed, worked on, and then the second week we're all going to go down to the, the south, about an hour and a half, I think, south of um, Hobart, and then just work intensely on developing these ideas into one to two page proposals. So, yeah, in a sense it's going to be quite intense, and what happens is we're also working with these festivals to get a solid brief from them that explains what their site is. So not everybody um, will be familiar with the sites, like, you know, it, and that's in fact probably not an issue in a sense about trying to say this is an idea and how is this idea realisable and what is it as a concept and what is it as to a, a reality and that's the, that's the dialogue that happens over those two weeks. Um, yeah, and at the end of that time, that two weeks, the, the, the idea proposals will come back to the, the curatorium which is extended past Carly and myself to con include Jeff Kahn. Um, no, Becting. Becting, sorry. Okay. Space. <laughs> okay, so there's a few people we can check that on the site. But anyway, and then that will come back and then the dialogues will start happening with the festivals and all the festivals potentially will get all the ideas and that will, will be discussed. So we're kind of fleshing it out because it is a new model, it's a new way of dealing because we dealt specifically with Splendid the Grass and in the where we worked before. But this fluidity and I think this openness actually can be a quite interesting challenge. And what is really the challenge is to actually not think that you're going to go for the $50,000 hit and think more about these middle middle frames and see what they do to really re-challenge an idea to make it work. <laughs> All right. Um, I think one of the interesting things for us in terms of working with Splendor in the Grass um, was to take artists out of a traditional gallery space or museum uh, onto a festival site and have them really look and examine what it takes to make a work in a festival setting. So outdoors, across three days, having to endure um, big crowds, uh, having to really work in a fast way to install the work, but also be there to maintain it if it needs across three days. Um, have it work across day and night, so look at lighting of works. Have it work in the round so that it can be visible and engaged or interacted with. Uh, from all sides, how you look at press and media for that work, how you look at building an audience leading up to the work and beyond. Um, there was a lot of things that were interesting for us about how you can move from um, a white wall gallery cube into making work that was really about engagement with audience. And as you know, and if you do go to festivals, people go to festivals for a different experience. As soon as you enter those gates and you go to um, a festival, you are entering a new world. And that world is really a kind of safeguarded space outside of your everyday experiences. So. Um, there's permission to take risks and to do things that potentially you wouldn't be able to do in a gallery setting. So, you know. And maybe just to follow on, it's not just for visual artists. The invitation is out to anybody across performance. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else. But, performance, you know. architecture, digital media, um, installation art, uh, live art. Um, we've had dancers. 
performance makers, puppet makers, puppet makers a jeweler. A jeweler. Yeah. And that was quite tricky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what is, what is curious is though that people over the labs have attempted potentially to do something they've never done before. And that is a really interesting challenge to take up. And that's the rollback to the provocateurs to start to have that discussion back. Okay, we're going to go for something you've ne never done before. How are you going to achieve it? So over the two weeks of that lab, we'll be talking back to, okay, do you know, understand, we, we're going to, you're going to make a video work and you've never done, then what do you need to know? So it's really that exchange backwards and forwards. And it's also curious because it's not like all the provocateurs have worked for festivals either. So it's a new framing for them at times as well. So it's a, it's a curious dialogue that goes over the time. So there, there starts to be an understanding and a joint understanding. And those relationships that could get developed with um, the provocateurs to the artists will be there and they carry on all the way uh, up to the, the presentation of the work. So that's part of the, the time of being around for these two weeks is to get to know each other. So you start to develop a relationship of understanding and workability, yeah. And sorry, hang on, maybe the last thing is that, and it's not just blanketed for individual artists, there's possibilities of collaborations that can be formed as well over the time, so. Once you're in time. Yeah, once you're in. <laughs> yeah. um, there has been a couple of questions about uh, responding or applying as a collective or a collaboration. Because there's 15 spaces for artists, we strongly encourage artists to be part of collectives or have worked collaboratively to note that in their application. But because of the limit on spaces, you stand a better chance of being received as an um, individual. So um, we advise that you apply as an individual and that there is potential if your work is commissioned to make it as your collective or in, to include your collective in the making of that work. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was um, the fact that, I mean, we talked a little bit about what I guess the narrative of the 15 days is, but in terms of working, uh, the day will start at around 10 and will be scheduled to 5. Some of the sessions will be um, quite tightly designed and others will allow you time to really develop and to um, drill down into your design. So Yeah, there's a lot of uh, kind of con uh, conceiving and design based strategies built in, like how you would take a, an idea, how you re-look at it in a different way, give it to somebody else, let them work on it, come back. So in a sense there's an interrogation of an idea that can happen across the number of people that are there to come back and then you get it back and go, oh, okay, maybe I never thought about it. You know, it's a curious thing about somebody from a distance can give a perspective if you're too close to something. So that's the kind of the fluidity and the open kind of framing that we want to have as well. And I think it's, it's worked. You know, that's the idea of that it's kind of a little bit never ending <laughs> your days because ideas are like, oh, you might make shit, I've got to change this. So people are there and, I, and maybe the team building starts to happen naturally in a way. It shouldn't be an enforced kind of thing, but it sort of starts to come along. There was two artists that have worked together, and one's from Western Australia and one's from Victoria, and they're managing to work on this light idea, and they've both worked in the frame in, a, in an art form that they've never worked before. That work is going to be realised this year. It was going to be taken up by the festival, but it didn't happen. But that's that possibility, and I think that's the kind of the beauty of the situation, that you do enter into a frame that's unfamiliar as well. Um, shall we ask for questions? Yes. Um, what are you looking for in the eyes of the client? What are we supposed to show about ourselves to make this work Um Well, we, the application clearly specifies early career. The funding has come from the Australia Council and there is a big push to be supporting early career artists. We have um, defined that by artists in their first five years of practice or the equivalent part-time. That can also mean that you're transiting from <coughs> one art form to the next. Uh, but really it's about being at a point in your career where it's going to benefit you to come to the lab. So if you feel like you're at a point where, yes, I'm really interested in making work that's in the public domain, that could work at festivals. I want to be engaging more with audiences and with sight. This could really benefit me, then we encourage you to climb. Um, there's also the side, 
benefits of getting to be an intense 15-day residency where you'll meet other artists, you'll be able to broaden your networks in terms of meeting with provocateurs, you'll have the chance to also meet with lots of festival directors because they'll be down there at Dark Mofo too. Um, so yeah, I think it's really for you to ask the question, is this really a good time in my career to take this, uh, this opportunity up? Um, to really then look at works or to describe and to show in your support material works that uh, have started to engage um, with site, with audiences, uh, maybe even outdoors at events or at underbelly um, opportunities like that. So to show us works or ideas for works. Um, and then if you haven't done that, one of the questions we did include was to describe a work by an artist um, or by a peer or collaborator that you have liked and then why. So I guess for us to get an indication of the kind of work you'd like to be moving towards making. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that before that you were really looking at. Do you mean performance installations? Because I assume you don't mean a little cabaret show to go on a festival or a, you know, a, a theatre game? Yeah. It's an interesting question this because we have had a no number of performers apply through Splendid and I think really Situate is about everything I like to say off the stage, so everything that supports a uh, festival site in and around what is already heavily programmed and given attention on the stages. Mm. Having said that, there might be opportunities to do visuals, there might be opportunities to engage in between acts on stage, but largely that's a heavily um, programmed and managed site or part of the festival. Um, and festival promoters are very strategic as to when things get programmed and how they get programmed. Uh, so we like to kind of encourage you away from there. But there is potential certainly to do performance works uh, outside of that space. Yeah. And, to, yeah. <laughs> um, and there has been opportunities to look at maybe curating spaces or ongoing sites like tents or there was an artist from Tuesday Society in Melbourne who wanted to curate a whole team of live performance, live art that uh, Splendor was very supportive of. Uh, so there is the potential for that. That's a much bigger investment in terms of um, kind of real estate on a festival site, but also money. So mm -hmm. if you can argue for that, and if your work you think is going to interest festival audiences, then certainly. And particularly, you're looking for things that are physically large or that involves large it's it's really varied mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that it doesn't you know I don't think we want to sit here and try to put a parameter on what ideas could be the lab is to try and find the undiscovered in a way and and that's and you know that's the question um, big scale doesn't need big attraction sometimes you know the most intimate act might bring a lot more people in over the time so, so that's there's a variation in that game. So, you know, I would I wouldn't want to think, have people. You know, that's the thing here. It's, we're trying to announce it, but we don't want to try and block it down and really say that it should be this or that. And maybe just to one thing back to your question. Um, uh, last year, uh, two years ago, Bennett Miller proposed this idea to raise a barn, and he's going to be making it for Splendor in the Grass this year. That barn will stay on site and become a venue for the following festival. So there's a fluidity of the idea that doesn't even have to end in that point in time that can carry on. So, so in a sense, it can be much more than you might even imagine. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I recently went to Pete's Ridge and there was a theatre for one. I mean, if you're going to do, I guess, that, then you're, I, part of the lab is looking at, well, how do you manage audiences while they wait? How do you, and how long is your experience? How long do you cater for the need? Because if you're at a festival for 30,000 people and you're doing a theatre for one, it puts a lot of pressure on the people who are staffing that. So you need to just kind of consider those things and it might be really effective to do a theatre for one. You just need to take into account the other things that are 
might be challenging to them. So it's more about pitching yourself as an artist than pitching yourself. Yeah, the lab is ready to come up with the ideas. We'd like to see some of your ideas so that we can understand your thinking, but mm. really it's for you to come with a blank slate or canvas and to use the lab as a way to come up with new ideas. We did a thing that we've done in the labs before is that everybody turned up with an idea, we put it in a hat, we handed them out, everybody read the idea like it was their idea and then we burnt them. <laughs> Paul loved that. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a bit of the point that you know, you've know you got to let go as much as hang on. It doesn't mean that that idea is dead in any way, shape or form, it's just been ceremoniously burnt. But that point of kind of going forward means you can say, well I've got an idea but I might have another one just as good in 30 seconds time. And that sort of game of playing is what we're trying to structure. It's not, to, it's not laissez faire, we're not trying to keep this over open platform, but there is a game of trying to say, okay, what is it? Because it may appear to be one thing, but in the end it may not be. It might be somehow the flip side of it, and that flip side might be the most effective thing. So that's the whole thing. So determining scale is a, a really great question because it's a critical thing that will, will be undertaken. Yeah. Can I ask that question of scale so they can see? So, which investment will someone have much more, say, hard Loud and quiet music, and some of the performance or whatever. Um, not jumping up here, you've got ideas, for instance, say, like sound based works, mm. which would not be work at Harvest because it wouldn't be effective for the sound. So, but it might work for the dialogue or something like that. Mm. So, is, I mean, it's okay if you think we you already know that the idea of how to do that at Harvest, but I can do that at Bar. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get to choose. So at the end of the lab, we are encouraging all artists to design or to have three different concept proposals for three different categories of funding for three different festivals. And that's really to harness your creativity and thinking through these different options, but also to provide the festivals with a multitude of different ideas that they can then decide to commission. So, But, you know, Harvest Festival may love a sound room. You know, you, we can't say, I think yeah. the question is that we're also in the dialogue with these festivals because they're actually putting themselves out to actually say, well, give us ideas that we don't have. So it's a two-way it's a, it's a two dialogue, which is really quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that working against you? What do you mean, does it work against you? Well, if you've worked you know, work on these projects, mm -hmm. huge projects, and you've worked at the capacity of more coordinating, that's what you've not as an artist to say. Is mm -hmm. that background? Does that work against you? I think the early, you're talking about the early career. I think you just have to argue it. Yeah, we'll take it on people's, you know, I think what's going can do. There is a framing, but I think that framing has to have the looseness. The Maya Fund, if you made that application, you know, you could have done, you could have painted and left it alone 15 years later, come back and you want to take up painting. So it's possible. I think it's, it's how you would bring it forward and put forward your stance. We'll take it case by case. But is your question more to do with you've been involved in the producing versus being a visual artist? Yeah. yeah. I think that works in your favour. I think to be able to understand both. I mean, you will, it'll be your ideas and you as an artist, but certainly learning how to put a work together and how to produce it and what's involved is, is a strength. So, yeah. I mean, I have done that in the past, particularly with my own artwork. Mm. You know, it's mm -hmm. sort of thing, festivals, and it's just like, oh, I don't know. Now you can bring the two together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that would be curious in that question, you know, if you start to frame an idea, yeah. that will probably show what you're trying to allude to in a way, yeah. which will give an indication. And some artists like to work in that way anyway. There was one artist that, you know, his, his final piece was a collaborative work where he worked more as a curator or a producer. So he was selecting and then he created, yeah. I guess, as an art director, how that looked and how they involved mm -hmm. and, and the premise to which they were included. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How much time do we have? 
one more. One more question about this. Um, you were saying it's four. I haven't read everything about the um, application, but it's for specific um, locations. Is there there's information? Yeah, there. so it's WOMAD Festival in Adelaide, which so is. I was actually just sorry, I mean, in terms of the actual site. Yeah, well, so WOMAD Festival is every year in the Botanic Gardens of Adelaide. Yeah. Um, the, the Festival of Fringe World, I think, is always in that plaza area near the Pika and around that zone. Yeah, but I I've seen, like, look at the site today. Is there information that I've been to know about the site? So, one of the, one also the, the distinguishing factors between this and Splendid is that we've been working with. Uh, the festivals and developing a festival brief and one of the things that we felt really important both for the festival and for the artists was to really get clear about what was the site, what was the audience and what was their wants or needs for art on site. Mm -hmm. So um, you will be given a full festival brief that they provided so all information about the kind of audience <coughs> that come, the age what they're interested in, where they come from, the site. So is it a three-day event? Does it need to? What are the areas that artists can consider in terms of making work? Can they make work in the campsite? Can they make work near the toilets? Can they make work for the bars? Can they make work under the stages in the canopies? Um, yeah, so that that is a really kind of detailed brief, much like you would get as a designer or an architect and, mm -hmm. and really to set up that understanding between the festival and the artist. And it's not really a client relationship, but it, it is there is a relationship there such that we're trying to build up where there's an understanding of um, expectations as to what the festival needs. You know, they need well thought of, highly resolved, high production value artworks that are going to be of a commercial standing and we're still situated still about supporting experimental works but they need to sit within the context of some of these quite commercially minded festivals so the production value needs to be of a high standard so mm -hmm. we need to be really clear that the artist understands what they're making work for as did the artists you know they, we really want to make sure that they're as well informed as possible mm -hmm. and that the festival really knows too what we're what we're doing here, so we don't get to a point in six months' time where there's lots of surprises and disappointment or yeah, sure. whatever. Um, but yeah, you'll be given all that information on entering the lab. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah, um, so you only find that out once exactly. Yeah, yeah, and you'll be given that for all all of the festivals, um, and you'll be also able to use the Dark Mofo site. We will take you around and we'll spend the first weekend really getting to know and interrogate what a festival site is. So that'll be an opportunity to go and visit sites, to talk to some of the participating artists that are already making work or have displayed work um, up at Dark Mofo and to get to meet the curators of Dark Mofo too. So why they program what they programmed, what the opportunities are for next year and how they'd like to see their festival expand. They're still a very new festival, obviously, so you have the opportunity in those conversations too to help them kind of think what might be possible. So, um, yeah, there's lots of opportunity there. I think we've come to the end, to the wrap. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If anybody, we can keep talking if anybody felt like they had a question, but if not, thank you. Um, the